Hey, this is a Richard Sherman podcast brought to you by Super Draft Fantasy, the official fantasy partner of Caesar Rewards. To all my PFF listeners, it's time to get hooked up when you play. Get a $10 bonus when you deposit 10 by using the code PFF at registration. Just download Super Draft and start playing games like Super 15. Get your hands on some cash prizes, Caesar Rewards credits, and more. We're even hooking you up with free PFF Elite subscription when you sign up. Just download the Super Draft app on Apple or Play Store. Use the code PFF when you create an account, deposit $10, and get a free PFF Elite subscription. The offer is only eligible for new accounts. Sorry, everybody who's already subscribed, but new accounts, it's exciting. Super Draft paid fantasy contests are available in 34 states. Must be 18 or older to play. Paid contests in most states. Visit superdraft.io for all eligibility restrictions. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. Don't you ever talk about me. Picked off. It is Richard Sherman. It's picked off by Sherman. Now, buckle up. Here he goes. And it is intercepted by Richard Sherman. Welcome to the Richard Sherman Podcast. This week we're having 49ers All-Pro Fred Warner. Great player. We're going to talk about the drafts. We're going to talk about Trey Lance. We're going to talk about this season, the fantastic players they have on defense, his draft experience, all of that. Of course, we're going to end it with the Super Draft Super 15 contest. Hit that subscribe button. Welcome my boy, Fred Warner. How you been though? Yeah, I've been outstanding, bro. Just out here in the Bay. Just got my first home. Obviously setting it up right now, and um, yeah, so I'm out here year-round now. Yeah, as you should be, as you should be, man. I'm happy to hear that. Mm-hmm. How's, mm-hmm. The, uh, how's the old lady? Any kids on the way? You know, all that. You just go <laughs> bang, bang, bang. <laughs> nah, man, no kids. I know I know you, you popped them out quick, but I, I ain't got nothing on the way or nothing. I ain't mad at that. Uh, we, got a, we, got our, we got our wedding in June. So. There we go. There we go. Yeah, we are going. Yeah, we, we, uh, we doing it in San Diego. Nice. San Diego, man. Yeah, so we're excited about it for sure. Nice. nice. That'll be. Yeah. That's gonna be a lot of fun. That's gonna. It's gonna be an event for all season for you, then. Boy, is it? Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I'm, I map it out the right way. Got to maximize it. Right. No question. No question. But yeah. you know, happy wife, happy life. Just they, they, they wasn't lying when they said it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just going heads up. Oh uh, yeah, I'm already done. Uh huh. Oh, but uh, shoot, it was a fun. Well, it was a fun ending to the year. It was some. Some some sketchy moments in there, but you know it ended up y'all end up catching fire as we knew y'all would, and uh, mm-hmm. you know some unfortunate plays at the end. But how'd you feel about the season? I mean, I felt good, man. I think uh, shoot, you know how it is. Like when you in that that moment where it, we're, we're three and five and we're, we're under fire, bro. I mean, it feels like the whole ah, the whole world's ending. Right, <laughs> you know right. What I'm saying? right. It feels it feels like the world the world's ending. Um, but you know that's when you, that's when you gotta have your leaders, you know, guys, guys within the team, the players, kind of step in and and uh, and own it. And I think guys, big big time playmakers like Devo Samuel, uh, you know, or, and guys like that, stepped up when we needed them. And uh, you know, and we we won some crucial games there in the middle of the season. And it still wasn't perfect, you know, as it never is. But uh, won some crucial games, got some heat, got some heat to us, and then uh won games when we needed them especially you know that last game at the end of regulation uh or at the end of the regular season um to put us in the playoffs i mean we're down 17 three at the half and we're all looking at each other eyes at, at halftime saying like look this is it literally right. <laughs> if, you don't, if we don't win this game like we're out so right. uh you know like like i said again like it's the same situation of uh, you know 49ers football you know it, we, we got the run game going played great defense and uh, ended up taking it home. So, yeah, I mean, it was clutch down the stretch. I mean, like you said, a lot of guys guys made big time plays. Uh, Bosa had a freaking uh, unbelievable year. Never going to get enough credit. Your fifteen and mm-hmm. a half sacks and act like he, mm-hmm. he had five. Uh, <laughs> right. My goodness, uh, right, like, right. Y'all not gonna yeah. give him. Y'all not gonna give him first team All Pro. Y'all not gonna give him comeback player of the year. Like I Come hear on. you with Burroughs. You know what I mean? I hear you, but. Like, not even one vote. Not, not one vote. Not one? And, like, y'all gave Dak, Dak, Dak Prescott a few. Like, come on now. Didn't get second team all pro. He should have been first team all pro. Didn't even get second team all pro. So, yeah, it, you know, the disrespect just keeps coming for him. He, he'll he'll get his. He will. And no no doubt. No doubt. He'll get it where it, where it, where it matters most, and that's his pockets. 
Um, <laughs> that's all that, you know, like, hey, right. you can't control all the rest of it, but, you know, they're going to give him what he what is just due. But, um, I mean, it was it, – y'all linebacker court, uh, we all knew – would be one of the best in the league, but it seems like everybody else is fine, finally figuring it out. Z's got to show what he could do. Um, Heck yeah. What did you feel, you know, the first year under uh, under Meek as the full-time D coordinator? Like, what was different? Uh, to be honest, for us as linebackers, obviously, since he was our coach, like, it didn't feel much different at all. And, you know, it, it, it was, um, you know, you know, solid. That's our guy. And, uh, he was missed, uh, for sure, just because of how amazing of a coach he is, but he wasn't missing the fact that, you know, I think, I think Meek came in and he did an outstanding job in terms of like solidifying his own, uh, you know, his brand on, on what our defense was going to be, you know, um, you know, that, that he created the swarm, uh, mentality, uh, to us. And I think just the, that, that special work ethic and, and the relentless mentality that that's what that stands for. And, and that was what we did, and that's how we practiced every single every single day, and that's what we showed on game day every single week. Uh, I think early on we we had some struggles, but I think as with anything, with more repetition and with more time, uh, you know, we got better and better as the season went on, and we played championship football all the way up until, um, you know, all the way up until that last game. And there's things that obviously I think all of us went back in that last game, but I think we we played well enough to get ourselves to, to that, you know, that NFC championship game. Um, and obviously we, we, we needed more to, in order to make it to, to the, to the dance, but uh, I'm still proud of the guys. I think I'm proud of D'Amico for the way that he, he conducted uh, himself in, in his first year as a DC and, um, and also the rest of the guys for how they competed all year long. Yeah. I mean, he did a freaking unbelievable job. Y'all were top five, top 10 the whole year, you know, regardless of the record and all that, y'all are playing great football and obviously you know how much talent is in the room and, you know, hopefully Ken law comes back. Um, mm -hmm. You get some continuity at safety. Obviously Jimmy played the whole year. Tart was a little banged up, but you know, guys play well at the corner spot. E-man was a little banged up. Um, you know, I expect them to address that in the draft at some point. What, speaking of the draft, like I didn't get drafted by them. So, you know, dealing with, how uh, they call uh, your yeah. visits or all that, but you can, how, how was that process? With them? Uh, it was good. Honestly, when it, when I was going through well, that whole process, I will say is not fun. The draft process is not fun. I'll say that part. Um, but I will say it came down to, um, you know, and obviously they're choosing you, but in my mind, I feel like two teams really showed, a lot of interest and it was the Niners and it was, it was actually the Broncos. Cause they, they coached me in the, in the senior bowl. So they had hands on, on me and they, they, they showed it. They had me on a 30 visit. Um, so, you know, spending that extra time with me, they, they showed that they, that they really liked me and my game. But I think the Niners, when I came and visited them, you know, during the whole draft process, you're being told what, how, what you can't do. You, you're not good at this. You, you, you need to do this. Um, but when I came to the Niners and, and I'm, I'm sitting in that office with, um, with Sala, he was probably one of the one, the, one of the first coaches that told me like, listen, everybody kind of has you ranked down here in like the fourth, you know, late third round. I see you right here. I see you as a, you know, a top second round pick. Um, I, I see, I look at your tape and I think it direct, it directly quote, like, you know, correlates to what we do in our defense, you know, and he's showing me clips and all that stuff. And, and so I walked away thinking like, man, like that, that vision went great. You right, know, like, right. yeah, okay. Like, yeah. All right. So, the positive feedback. So, you know, I, I remember, I remember talking to all the coaches. I, I talked to, to, I talked to me, I talked to the Sala and I talked to HT and, um, you know, Kyle, John, all the, all those guys on the 30 visit. And, and so it went great. Uh, I know they, they do their due diligence. They all, they all care about character. Um, you know, the character of, of these players and, and wanting to talk to guys face to face to see, you know, just how much does this guy love football. And I think that's what our team, and you know that, you know, this team is a bunch of guys who just love ball and who are wanting, wanting to dedicate their lives to it. And that's why you see, you know, the right, the right product on the field. And so, um, it, it's a, <laughs> it's a grueling process. I'll say that, but it's, it's one that, that you got to cherish too, because it only happens one time. So I always take those memories with, with me as I go. Well, I mean, like you said, it's a, it's a beautiful, I mean, it's not a beautiful process. You know, it ended up working out beautifully with the right team in the right spot. But tell mm -hmm. me some of the, the different moments that happened throughout the process, going from like the last college game to when you got drafted by the Niners, the ups and downs. 
Yeah, you know, you you go straight from playing that last college game right into into combine training, or just into you know doing all these all these little hoops and, and drills and stuff that they got to, they got to run you through to see like, okay, like how does, how is it like, what, how, how's this guy's athleticism? How does he, how does he move? And obviously in the moment, I'm thinking that all of this is like the end of the world. Like if you don't perform well, then you're not getting drafted or some, I don't know. I'm not, I came to realize that tape is like 90% of the, of the deal. Like they're going right. to look at your tape. They're going to be like, can this guy play football? Like, okay. Like this, that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to base our, our, um, our decision on, but then they want to, they want everything else to like kind of, it's a puzzle. They're trying to fit all the pieces to the puzzle, you know, in every single player. So, um, you know, it goes straight into all, all the training stuff. And then I remember going to the senior bowl and that senior bowl was kind of like the first time I was like, okay, like this is for real. Like I'm, I'm not getting a lot of sleep, you know, anytime you're not on that football field where you've got all 32 teams eyes on you, like, you know, taking down notes at uh, every single move you do you're in a, you're in a, a ballroom, like with a bunch of different scouts and, um, and you know, guys who make those type of decisions, like they're all sitting there asking you a million questions about your upbringing and football and, and yada, yada. So senior bowl straight to the combine combine is like, you know, another one of those grueling tests. Like you're sitting there, you're having to do all these interviews and you, you want to say the right things, but you don't want to sound like a robot. And like it, <laughs> you're saying the same answer to 32 different teams. So it's right. like, you, you know, you start to sound repetitive. So, you know, and then at the end of, at the end of the combine, that's when you do the drill work. And by the time I got through the drills, I'm like, man, thank you. Like, let me just, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm good now. Like all the interview part, I feel like is the hardest. And right. then you get to the drills and then you just kind of just do whatever you've been practicing. You already kind of have an idea of what you're going to do anyway. So, um, you know, did all the 40 the, and the, the vertical, all that kind of stuff. And then, um, after the combine is when you start doing your 30 visits, which, you know, that's when you're each team has 30, uh, 30 players that they can bring in and, and do like one-on-one -on -one visits with. And so I, I remember doing one, I think I did four or five visits. I did the dolphins, Niners, Denver, and the bills. So four, four 30 visits. And there might've been a fifth in there. I don't know. I'm probably forgetting somebody. But, uh, you know, doing 30 visits and, you know, you're going in there, same type of thing, interview business trip. And then after the 30 visits, you got, um, uh, you got coaches that come to your college and, and take you through workouts. And that, that one on one workout is different. It's the worst. If, you get, if, you get, if you get the right coach or the wrong coach, I would say that boy go, he go, he go burn you into the ground. Into the like, ground. Really kind of, and you buy yourself. Burn you out. It, it, you buy yourself, you're trying to wear you out. That's the, I mean, that's the goal. And, and, and a lot of the time they're just trying to see, okay, like what's it worth this new mind that, you know, in terms of like, they're not really trying to, they already know you can move. Like they just saw all your clips from the combine and then how you move that way. So, you know, so you do those and then you have your pro day. And luckily, you know, you do your stuff at the combine well, then you don't have to do a lot of the drills at, at pro day. So I remember just doing the football drills at pro day. And then after pro day, it's just a waiting game, you know, staying in shape, getting ready for, for the draft. And then, uh, the draft is, you know, the, the best day of your life, uh, or was for me, I, it just depends. Obviously I guess, depending on what, what happens on that day for you and what your expectations were, but, um, you know, seeing all that hard work that you, you put in over years and years and years, finally, you know, come to fruition with so, being drafted is, is a big deal. So what would established all pro Fred tell <laughs> young pre rookie Fred <laughs> going in? Uh, Going into the draft process, yeah. Going what, into, what, just playing, going into the Niners, just going into the whole thing. Like, like, what would you? What would advice would you have for your younger self? Maybe even high school, Fred. Wow, high school, Fred. Man, that boy didn't know a dang thing. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I mean, that's that. I mean, that's a good question. Obviously, you know, there's young people who ask for guys like me advice all the time, but I feel like every route, every route is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't sit here and say like, you got to do these things. You got to go to all the local, the, all the camps and you got to do the X, Y, and Z in order to get your name out there and get, get attention this way. Like in my, in my, in my, uh, situation, you know, cause there's, there's obviously so many different players at this level who are at the top of their game, like who, who have performed at a high level, gotten all pros and stuff like that. And you look at each of our journeys, like they're completely different. You look at my journey compared to this, a guy I came into in my draft, Darius Leonard, 
you look at our journeys and they're completely different. Like he played at, at HBCU. I played at BYU, you know, and, and like, I don't know what his high school or what his upbringing life was like. And, um, you know, it, there's no, there's not one route. I would say if I did have any advice, it would probably just to be like, like, don't, don't wait to start like trying to work hard for like when you actually get here. Like, it's not it, like you need to already have all that stuff instilled in you. Like you need, you better have been working hard your entire life. Like that's just gotta be the foundation that that was my foundation was like, I was doing all the, all the, you know, the, the two, like the extra workouts after school and like before school, like all that kind of stuff, like to try and get that advantage. Like that was always instilled in me was hard work from like my mother. And so the hard work plus the the passion and the love for the game. Um, you know, I feel like those two things are, are like just kind of go hand in hand. And like, those, those are like the foundational pieces to, um, and it, it, I'm not gonna lie. Like some of it's just luck, you know, like you, right. you talk to the right people and like some people, some, some guy might see you and who knows, like, I don't know, but I think there's, there's foundational pieces and I think hard work and, and passion and love for the game. I think those are things that I've, I've leaned on throughout my entire career. So what, what do you think, you know, I've had the, the, the blessing and the honor to know you from the beginning of ah, your stop <laughs> NFL <laughs> career till now, yeah. like, what do you think yeah. PFF got you graded? You know, they do all their grades and all that as the highest uh, graded linebacker the last two seasons. Uh, obviously your first two seasons were, were really good, but they weren't, you know, the elite level that you're at right now. What do you think changed? You know what I mean? Did the game just slow down for you? The reads, the coaching get better or just like, Hey, repetition, repetition, seeing the play, seeing the scheme, being in it, feeling more comfortable. Yeah. I think, uh, I think personally, so back at, you know, if we, if we look back to what I played at BYU, let's, let's just say not even high school and all that high school, I played multiple positions, but at BYU, I played like a nickel, like a nickel back, you know, like I was that Sam linebacker, but like I was out, I was out apex, you know, at number two covering the slot. And so that's what, that was another hard thing for me coming out in the draft. Like nobody knew where to put me. They're like, uh, we look at your tape. Like, we don't know if we, if you should move to like three, four outside linebacker, or if you have the instincts and the ability to shed blocks and be an inside linebacker, like, uh, we don't, you, you know, you're kind of a, you're kind of a tweener. And that was another one of the reasons why the Niners um, interview went well, because Sala knew exactly where I'd be. He's like, listen, you're smart. Um, you know, you're instinctual. We think that you can, you know, we've seen how you use your hands on blocks and stuff. Like, we think that you, you would do well here. So from day one, I was the Mike linebacker and not the Mike, Mike linebacker. I was just a Mike linebacker. Um, and so I think for me, it was just like you mentioned, like that repetition, like seeing things I hadn't seen being behind, you know, the, the D tackles, like I hadn't seen guards and centers and poles and all this other stuff. Like all that was brand new to me. I, those first two years, especially that first year, like that first year, I'm just playing based off of just, just natural reaction. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm worried about calling close left, close right. Roy Lou. And like, <laughs> not to mention you got to call, you got the green dot. Yeah, I got the green dot. And so I'm, I'm swimming, I'm swimming that whole first year. I'm surprised solid didn't pull me. I look back and I'm like, man, how, how did that man keep me in the lineup? And he rode with me. Cause I guess he saw something in me, you know, and he, he was, he was riding with me. I, I'll say that, um, roll with me all the way through that first year. And it was, it was, it was a, it was a lot of bumps in the road that first year, you know, it in 2018, that, that was a rough season, but, um, you know, and then that second year, there was just like a, I, I had a, I had a decent start to the year. I think another huge part of it is obviously people that have been around players, uh, Malcolm Smith, uh, Quan Alexander, that's that second year getting Quan next to me kind of brought out that swag factor, like that it factor of, of that was already inside of me, but just kind of be bright. Right, you just got you know, unleashed. Like, it, it just got unleashed. Right. And so once I got that confidence, I got that confidence and that swag. Uh, you know, I feel like that's what really like allowed me to start playing my own style and like playing my game and, and really coming into my own um, that second way half halfway through the second year, my second year. And then that kind of gave me the, the ability blocks to go and have uh, my breakout third year being all pro and, and pro bowler. And now it's just about like trying to find that 1%. Like, how do you, I feel like I haven't even, you know, scratched my ceiling at all. So that's why I'm trying to like figure out, okay, like what, 
what could I be doing better to like really, to really maximize my potential? Um, you know, cause I am, it, it, the position is still new to me, to be honest. I feel like I still don't, I don't know if even close to the, all the answers. Right. And so I'm, I'm constantly asking guys different questions and, and learning from different cats around the league, uh, who play the position really well. And so that's why I lean on a guy like Bobby, you know, over in Seattle to kind of pick his brain and see like how, how in the world have you done this at such a high level for so long? Like, it's incredible because when you're, when you're at the top, like everybody knows who you like, everybody knows what you're like. It's easy. It's easy to be like, you know, my, my third year, I felt like I was all pro my, my third year because I kind of popped on the scene. Nobody really knew who I was. Right. Right. And then when people all of a sudden know who you are, they start scheming against you and they right. start doing different things to try to, you know, and it's different. And so when the, when you look at the guys like ADs of the world, like the guys who have just been dominant for years and years, like I'm like, <sighs> boy, like these are, like, these are guys, you know? And so, right. yeah, that's, uh, I don't even know what the question was with that. I'll be with Bobby when he started, you know, and he, he, you know, <laughs> but uh, a lot of of seeing the same, getting the same scheme looks you getting consistently. Specials, you're always getting speed from three. You're getting stick exactly. routes right there. You're getting spot routes out of the, you know what I mean? It mm -hmm, go, it, it, mm -hmm. it, every mm -hmm. year you see it, every year you see the same thing. You're a young quarterback, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, they go, it's going to be quick game. I'm not even going to need mm -hmm. to backpedal at all. I'm just mm -hmm. sliding left to right. It starts to happen mm -hmm. faster. And mm -hmm. uh, it's been cool to see you, you develop. I remember having a conversation with you and just saying, hey, work your ass off on special teams and Hey, and, and just <laughs> wait for your moment. Just be available. And then <laughs> two yeah, weeks later, you start. I always remember <laughs> it. I always remember it. Uh, I, 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 literally before, before uh, coming and doing the interview, I was like, man, what, what are we going to talk about? I'm like, I'm going to have that one in my back pocket just in case they had like, okay, let me, let me have that one. With the, with, I will always remember that one. You know, you telling me to just work, work hard, know your role, special teams, fall out on special teams, and then you'll get your, your op. And then I just was like, nope. Here I am, like, <laughs> get ready. Right. You're like, ah, well, skip that step. Let's go ahead. Yeah, skip that one, yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I got lucky in that aspect, but yeah. yeah ain't no That's such true. thing as luck in this game. Not not at that level, not at this level. It's, it's you earned mm -hmm. it. You earned it. I mean, mm -hmm. and you earned what you're getting and what you're going to continue to get. And y'all have a really talented team. Uh, y'all going to continue to be great. You know, Nick Bosa ain't going nowhere. Uh, Debo mm -hmm. ain't going nowhere. Uh, I don't think Jimmy's going anywhere. E man, mm -hmm. a lot of the foundational pieces that y'all have um, don't seem to be going anywhere, and they continue to develop talent. Who you think they're going after in this draft? Y'all don't got to pick until the second round. I think sixty. Who y'all think y'all going after? Yeah, shoot. Um, I don't know. I really. I mean, I second round. I would assume they probably they probably go defensive back, you know, just because you can never have too many good DBs. I, we have a lot of young good DBs right now. Um, I don't know what the situation is. With, are they going to bring back Jason Barrett or 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 Josh Norman or any of those veteran guys that we that we've had on the team? Uh, obviously, you mentioned a guy like Ian Man, who's an established vet, who is one of our lockdown corners. Um, you got some young guys in in, in Demo and. And Ambry, who came in and did and did a good job, did a good job when they did uh, when they did show up, um, you know. So yeah, you can never have too many good DBs. I think I think getting another defensive back in the second round probably be what happens. I agree. I agree. I think they're gonna go corner. I think they're gonna they're gonna get a corner, even if they bring the vets back, even if they bring JV back and and Norman, they're gonna want a young guy to develop and and really be right. consistent because after how banged up y'all got last year, it was. Mm -hmm. It was, it was grabbing mm -hmm. at straws for like six weeks mm -hmm. there, you know, and mm -hmm. for as talented of a team as, as you, you guys have, it's hard to, to watch that when it's, when it's just like, bang, you can't stay healthy here. It's like it, the middle is gold. And it's like, but if you ain't got nothing on the edges, you know, if you you one corner, your two corner, your three corner go down and you're like, I don't know a team it's that just, can survive that. It's one of the hardest positions to play too. Like, I mean, you, shoot, I ain't got to tell you that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah, you got it. You got it. It's hard to find really, really, really good lockdown. Like gear. I'm going to put you on this Island and, do, and let me, let's not worry about you for right. a whole game. Like that's hard to find. So.
And I think they might yeah. go after some guys in free agency. You know, I mean, there's a lot of really good corners out there available, a lot of vet corners that, you know, they're going to be expensive and y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all not going to have the money like that because you got to pay Debo or whatever the King's ransom is these days. And, <laughs> and both are going to be asking for a little more than what his brother got. Right. <laughs> exactly. So I, I don't listen. Well, if I learn one thing, I don't know nothing about it. I, I try to just, right, just stay, in my, stay in my lane, baby. That's you it. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm worried about what, what, what is Fred Warner supposed to be doing and what, what I got to be speaking doing of to that, make sure I'm getting better. Speaking of that, OTAs and all that is, is uh, going to be different this year. I don't know if it's happening or not happening. Or what what you think about the whole process, how it went last year? Because it was last year, it was kind of super weird. Did it mess up your, like, yeah. Routine, you know what I mean. Your first couple of years of the league just been a like a really weird space. Really weird, yeah. I know. I mean, even more so. I mean, I think because my the only OTA I had before this past year was my rookie year. Because my second year, I, I had I was dealing with like a I had a knee scope, so I, they sat me out that year. My third year was COVID, didn't have OTAs that year, and then this past season, they, I finally had to do or not had to do, but did OTAs. <laughs> For, for my for my second time in my career, so um, you know, I think uh, I think this year will probably be as normal as as any other season or as any regular season has been. Um, kind of moving away to, from that COVID from the COVID protocols because of how many people are getting vaccinated, and um, that's kind of what you saw towards the end of this past season as well. Like they eliminated the the testing every day and um, you know all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? And uh, I'll just be here. I'll well, be well, here ready to go for whenever. The important question is, how has your life changed since you got your money? <laughs> it's the, it's the exact same, baby. I don't know. I don't know. It don't look the same to me. I see no, feathers no, in, no. The, yeah, in the face. You start, you, start yeah, you start to see these little expensive feathers in the house. Right. You know, it's uh, it, more than anything. It's, you know how it is. It's just like, knowing that you like not having to worry, you know, in that area of your life, you know, in, in terms of finances and, uh, knowing that you're going to be in the same place for a while. Um, as long as you hold up your end of the bargain. Right. right. Um, but, uh, I think that's, that's, that's the, that's the thing that meant the most to me was them believing in me and investing in that, um, investing into me, you know, from, from what, what I've, what I've done, um, and what I'm going to continue to do for them. Right, right, right. And you're going to continue to lead. You've been a leader of men, and I think it really exposed the character of the team when y'all were three and five. I think that's the coolest part about those moments. Like, it sucks in reality, you know what I mean, when you're in them mm -hmm. and you're in that mm -hmm. space, and it's like, man, this is mm -hmm. terrible. But the 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 things that it exposes are are reality. That's real. That's the real. Saying. Good, bad, or indifferent, that's who, who y'all are. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I wasn't in the locker room. I wasn't in there at those times. But it seemed from the outside looking in and from texting with those guys, that nobody lost hope. Nobody, you know, at least the kind of foundational guys really already understood, hey, it's go time. We about to go. Mm -hmm. And you did. You did. And I think mm -hmm. that's going to really carry y'all a long way, um, regardless of everything. Yeah, I think so, too. I think, you know, there, there, was, there was a part of me that was so angry. Like, I'm like, man, we are way too talented. Like, I've seen I've seen the lows of the lows, you know, my, in that rookie year. I guess there, there's lower than that, right? I think we won four games. You could win none right, or right. one, you know, like, you, you know, but I mean, I've seen, I've seen a team that, you know, is struggling to win games. And I, I knew the type of roster we had, I'm like, we are way, way too talented to be losing games, you know, to these teams. And so I only, I knew it was a matter of time before we really flipped it around and, and started to, and started to win. But I'm like, it's not just, it's not just going to happen because we want it to happen. Like, it's like, no, you gotta have, you gotta be intentional. You gotta be detailed. You gotta make sure you're doing the things that winners do, you know, in order to win games. And it's all about executing in the moment. You know, you could, you could practice as hard as you want. You can do amazing in practice and, and, and whatever, but that doesn't mean it's going to translate over to a game. You've got to execute in the games. And so uh, once we started doing that, I think that's when it all changed. And, and you really look back on the season, you're not going to remember the fact that we were three and five. You're going to remember the fact that we made it to the NFC championship game, you know? Right. And so uh, now, it's, now it's time to really take that next step again. A hundred percent. And, and what you learn and what those young guys with the Elijah Mitchells and what the, what, uh, all the young, um, three, uh, dang, I came in, uh, Juwan, Juwan freaking mm -hmm. showed up huge in the playoffs and, and throughout Boy. the end of the season, like, Boy. my goodness, I, 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 Juwan was going crazy. Now I remember crazy. seeing him, but those things like are going to the momentum from that should mm -hmm. like uh, i can't wait to watch it play out this season you know the confidence mm -hmm. that he has now 
compared to where mm-hmm. he was last year. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable, mm-hmm. and I'm sure they're mm-hmm. going to draft. But like, he's going to be he's going to be a, a problem. A problem. A problem, bro. I love Juwan. Like, it, I will say this. I've said it to numerous people. I'll say it to anyone, bro. He is like, he is one of the best football players on our team. Like, and he and it showed in, in the biggest moments. The biggest games when we needed we needed guys to make plays. Like I think there was a stat somewhere where like most of his catches were either for a first down or a touchdown. Like, like the dude like just balls. Like, and it's crazy because like it's not just with the ball in his hands. It's like blocking. Like he's over here taking dudes out in the in the, in the blocking game because that's just a mentality. It's a mentality thing. Like he's got the right mentality. And you look at him, and you you look at him. He's kind of like mm, you know he looks like he'd be a decent player. Bro, this dude is a dog. Like I'm telling you, like he's one of our best players. <laughs> I, I, I remember, I remember we were going in one on ones his rookie year, and you know he's seventh round rookie. They're they're like super high on him. All the scouts are like, "Hey, you gotta watch this dude. Hey, be careful yeah, with him. Like yeah. he got this. He went for all these yards." God, I'm like, I'm watching the tape. And I'm watching him walk around. I'm like, bro, he looked like he got bad knees. Like, <laughs> he, he, don't look like he don't look like he about to cause me no issues. Oh, my and then goodness, you get out yeah. there and deal with him, and you like, wait I'm a minute. Telling like, I'm telling you. Who put this? There's some dudes. There's some dudes who are just ballers, bro, like who just look, are just gamers. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's exactly what he is. And I think you, you talked about all them, all them yards and stuff he had at Tennessee. Like, he, he balled at Tennessee. I don't know how. I don't know. You know, I don't know why. I, I, I didn't watch him, but I believe it. You know, I right. see. I see the. I see the kid work. I see him work. I see how he. How he. How he works at his craft. I see how you know he. he how he competes. Um. You know, I love going. At, I love go like competing against a guy like that. You know, he, he he'll chirp at you a little bit. You know, and, and get after guys like that, and that just fires me up. You know, what I'm saying like that's just that's what I'm all about is is the competition. So. Uh, yeah, I, I love Juwan. He's yeah, great. I, I'm so happy for him. I mean, he's doing exactly what KB did for him, but he's just developing differently. But it, it's really exactly. cool to see. And now Trey Lance. I mean, you know, everybody, uh, they're they going to say, John, going to talk about it in, the, uh, in a press conference. Like, oh, man, I don't know how those clips got out. John, you know, she, <laughs> like, oh, man, he looks pretty good. I don't know no, no, who no, leaked no, no, them. But, <laughs> but, but how has he been? Yeah. I mean, you know, he's a rook. So everybody... They right. put too much burden of expectations when you're a high round pick. Thankfully, oh, the man. Niners didn't fall into that and and, and yeah. force him out there too early. But he looks like a talented kid. Yeah, bro. Uh, and like you said, I, I'm I'm really happy with what they with what they did for what they did. You know, in terms of his plan, um, letting him sit behind Jimmy, learn learn the offense, learn the system, learn how to be a pro. Uh, didn't play college football for a year. You know, played at North Dakota State. I think he has a total of like he has a handful of games that he he's even played at the right. college level. I think it's right? nineteen, something like that. Yeah, like come on, bro, come on. And so, um, you know, the fact that he even came in and was like as mature as he like he's as, as mature as they come. Um, you know, that's why he reminds me a lot of myself. Like I feel like I came in and that's what everybody was telling me. Like, oh yeah, you're mature for your age. You're mature for your age. And I feel like that's exactly how he is. He's got the right mindset. He didn't come in with this cocky arrogance, like, oh, yeah, I'm the third round pick. Yeah, I'm this, I'm that. You know, like he knew exactly where he stood. And he he came in, he was he was hungry to learn, uh, you know, had a thirst for learning and uh, asked, asked Jimmy all the questions, asked the coach and staff all the questions, even even defensive players, even myself, you know, like how, um, how to be a pro and how to compete and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I think as his confidence continued to grow throughout the year, you started to see the – you started to see those wild moments uh, that we all talk about, you know, in the practices and, uh, you know, in the couple games that he did play, I feel like he, he did some great things in those games as well. Um, I, I can only say from what I watched from the sideline during the game, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, going against that kid every single day in practice uh, for sure made me a, a better player. I think, I think all the, all the DBs, everybody else on the, on the defensive side would say the same thing. Um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about him. I think he, I think, his his ceiling is really 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 high. Um, you know, it's just it's just a matter of how how high does he how high is he willing to take it? You know, right. I think the, I think the I think it's in, in his hands and whoever is helping him to um, to progress because he is very young and it's gonna it's gonna take um, not only you can't just you can't put the entire burden on him and say here you you have all the tools now you better develop and you better do this and you better do that and you better lead this franchise to six championships. Whoa, whoa! Like I'm gonna need some help along the way now. Right. So you, you know, if you want, if you want the kid to have success, you got to make sure you surround him with the right, with the right people. Um, and I think, 
uh, this team has, exa- I mean, this team is very loaded. You, you know, you know, like we, we have a lot of good players. So uh, he has a very good team, which is, you know, uh, a great starting point for him to have a, a great career. Yeah, no question. No question. I mean, he has leaders like you. I mean, he got Eric, he got Debo on the other side, Kittle, who we haven't talked about enough. You know, George is, is, is his <laughs> yeah. crazy self. Um, exactly, yeah. Uh, and, and, and he has everything. He has Kyle, you know, who's one of the best offensive mind, obviously lo- losing Mike um, uh, uh, McDaniel and, and LaFleur and, and all those guys. And, you know, it's going to be different in that room, you know, with McDaniel gone. Um, but I think, you know, anytime Kyle's still around, you know what I mean? The, 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 the mad scientist is still in the building. Mm-hmm. He's going to have mm-hmm. one of the best schemes. He's going to put him in the best position to be successful. Mm-hmm. He's going to, but mm-hmm. he's going to put problem, put pressure on the defense, put pressure on the linebackers. Um, and so I think he he could not wish for a better position. And like everybody's saying, all these draft analysts are saying he would have been the number one pick this year. He would have been the number one guy <laughs> over all the, I mean, they, they ain't talking oh, yeah. about picking a quarterback till 28, 29, these quarterbacks. <laughs> and the top quarterback, they're saying hands is the smallest in the league. Like, oh, what are we talking about here? Can he play or can he not play? You're talking about it? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about none of that, but you, yeah, I, trust me. There, there's so many different the- theatrics that go into that go into it. It's funny. All, all I can do is laugh, but. Yeah. Hey, this is a Richard Sherman podcast brought to you by Super Draft Fantasy, the official fantasy partner of Caesar Rewards. To all my PFF listeners, it's time to get hooked up when you play. Get a $10 bonus when you deposit 10 by using the code PFF at registration. Just download Super Draft and start playing games like Super 15. Get your hands on some cash prizes, Caesar Rewards credits, and more. We're even hooking you up with free PFF Elite subscription when you sign up. Just download the Super Draft app on Apple or Play Store. Use the code PFF when you create an account, deposit $10, and get a free PFF Elite subscription. The offer is only eligible for new accounts. Sorry, everybody who's already subscribed, but new accounts, it's exciting. Super Draft paid fantasy contests are available in 34 states. Must be 18 or older to play. Paid contests in most states. Visit superdraft.io for all eligibility restrictions. All right, we got the Super Draft Super 15 contest, but there's only three picks this week. <sighs> it's basketball, NBA. I'm not happy to talk about the NBA because my Lakers, man, my Lakers, my Lakers. LeBron is having a year where he's averaging 28.9 points, eight rebounds, six assists, or somewhere, in, and we, we we're, we're like six games under 500. Like, could you imagine having that kind of season and being six games under 500? He's playing good basketball. We wasting a year, Lakers. Come on, but over and under, Luka Doncic, 30 and a half against the Warriors. Luka, I got him going over 30. I got him going over 30. I, he, he's going to have a shootout with Steph Curry. He has pride about him. The Mavericks do not have a lot of offensive options. I got Luka going over 30 and a half. LeBron going for over or under 28 and a half against the Clippers. I got him over that. LeBron has been having 30 point games. He's averaging 20. He's averaging over, over 28 and a half. So I need him to meet his average. So we're going over that LeBron. John Morant over or under 29 and a half versus the Celtics. John Morant is on an MVP streak. He wants that trophy. So I know he's going to get 29 and a half. Like he's trying to set records over there in Memphis. So he's going to continue that streak. John Morant over. So all overs. Uh, this week, get your picks in, download the app, Super Draft. This is a Super 15 contest. If you're a first time subscriber, use the promo code PFF and get your first $5 contest free. No strings attached, no credit card required. Get in there. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you, Fred. I really appreciate you. And we're going to have to get you back on here next time. Maybe we'll bring young Troy Dale on here so he can talk mess to you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll, I'll probably be boy. in the building at some point, you know what I mean? Figure, figuring it out. I'll probably be in there and bother y'all during training camp or something. If they I would love it. And come come see, you know, now that you're veteran, Fred, you know, they say it happens fast. Now you're going into your fifth year. <laughs> Bro, flies by. You know that. Yes, it is. You know it's, that. It's better than anybody. This yeah. Is but what I year are you going into? This will be 12 if I keep it going. 12. Woo! 
Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Them, them, yeah. Them corner legs too. Right. Right. All, right, that, right. all the miles on that. On all the miles on that. On the they don't got a lot of practice reps left in them. Just know that. <laughs> Still a yeah. Strictly game reps only on them. Say, look, I'm already done. Look, y'all need me in the game. Or do y'all want me to yeah. get? I can get picks and practice all you want, but You're right. God, come on now. We yeah. know. We know them things don't count. In the game, you ain't. Gonna... <laughs> But uh, yeah, man, it's 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 and and you know obviously the important question. I know my invitation to the wedding is in the mail, so you know what I mean. I look forward <laughs> to seeing that RSVP and doing all that whole ordeal. Yeah, you know that, you know that for sure, bro. Well, I appreciate you having me on it. Seriously, it's yeah. fun. It's all love, Fred. I I text you so. Yeah, no doubt. All right, brother. Bye bye. Bye bye. Keep the traffic.